you're telling a computer what to do, and the computer flies the aircraft. Um, you give inputs to the computers and through the joystick and through the programming of the uh, flight management system. And the aircraft will give you guidance or then now you can move the seat forward and back. And the idea is that you reach the pedals in front. Um, good. And by pressing on the... Have you flipped, do you have any previous oh, experience? No, 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 no. Okay, yeah. Um, if you press the pedals from where they are now uh -huh. um, with your feet uh, like this, yeah, or if you even if you bring your feet down to the yeah. floor, yeah, and press it like that, that uh, you adjust the uh, rudder so you can steer the aircraft on the wrong way. Um, and then, yeah, doing that, pressing with your toes like that, uh, activates the brakes. Uh, brakes. So um, the auto, uh, the aircraft will brake by itself if we set the auto brake, but um, if it doesn't activate, then we'll brake using manual brake. Um, on battery, so that should stay up for another thirty minutes. Um, legally, it should stay up for another 30 minutes. Mm. Um, but for us to start the aircraft up again, we need, so we can start it with just the batteries. So the batteries mm. are on. If you turn the APU on from there, and then the APU start from there. You destroy it. Yep. Now we have to wait a little bit um, for it to actually start spinning. We can help, help with turning off all kind of non-essential electrics, so everything's off. And it takes a little bit of time, but once it, we can only start the APU, I think, maybe a few times using the batteries. The batteries run quickly, um, and we can see their uh, voltage. Yeah. Then there's a fire check. Yeah, then we check the, uh, using these, or oh, it's test there, thing. test there, and test there. Uh -huh. And uh, we have, and if you, you need, yeah, that needs to be kept in the, on the bottom, but it may not make any oh, sound out, yeah, it's, Still waiting for that, that to start. And we also have, um, if we needed, we could also set. Or well, now just the moment I pressed that, the AP came on. But what I what I did was I set uh, connected an external mm. uh, power source to the aircraft. It's not connected, or it's not drawing any electricity from there. That's why there's a green available. But at the same time that I did that, we also happened to get the APU uh, alive as well. So now the APU is running the aircraft. And that's why we, we still, it's kind of doing a systems check there. And now that this uh, screen was fine, it moved it back to the primary spot. And now if you held that down, a little bit longer, or it might be that it, there, there we go. And then the APU, there, and then engine wide, one fire as well, there, yeah. And then we also have a cargo smoke test, so you can press that test there. There. And it, the way... To reset. Yeah, or that's, that's kind oh, of, okay. it cancelled by itself, but then if it doesn't, then we can just cancel it from there as well. Yeah. Seat built. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no smoke. There. And now we start engine two, so that up and forward. Now we can see that engine two, so the high pressure compressor is starting to spin up. Once that reaches about 50%, um, the starter for the engine uh, kicks out. So now it's the starter is now kicking, starting up the engine, and we can see it from here. About at around 50%, the starter will turn off, and the engine should start to become self-sufficient. You know, always one engine at a time. Yeah. And on the A320, it's the right engine and then the left. And the reason is that the right engine pressurizes the uh, apartment brake. And now we got to 50% or over, so the starter kicked out. Once that turns off, now we can start engine two, or engine one, sorry. Oh, we and can that, hear the control. Yeah, there. yeah. And that can, you can also check it from here. So we have in the blue system and yellow system, 3000 PSI, and the green system, is being pressurized now bit by bit by the left engine. And that's the PTU, so that's transferring hydraulic pressure now to uh, the remaining systems, so the green system. And now we can see it the pressure rising. And now we wait for 50% again, and now the starter kicked out, and the left engine should start becoming 
is self sufficient. Yeah. And that's again, the both engines are up and running, so that could be switched back to normal. Yeah, that's the engine startup. Got it, now I know. Yeah, almost that's as easy as starting with a key. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Hope this you was the fun. first touch and then. Or by tilting it, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, there's no pitch and roll. Like uh, yeah, no, yeah, it doesn't roll. Yeah. yeah. But you can try. You can try how it feels. Your thumb should rest somewhere here. Yeah. Good, like that. And yeah, that's to go up and down and then left and right. This is about 15 degrees. Yeah, about about that. Or no, is that, that's, is that that's, 10 degrees here? Yeah, that's 10 degrees there. Okay, so we're looking at here. So okay. yeah, yeah, and the. Um, well, 15 degrees is exactly what we want to pitch up to mm -hmm. once we take off. So um, once we get airborne, um, that's where we're initially putting our nose. So this black spot here um, indicates where our nose is right now. Mm -hmm. And once we start pulling back, we'll raise the nose up to 15 degrees there. And we'll keep it there for a few minutes or about a minute or so and start pulling the flight director, which comes, uh, which activates once we get airborne. Like a reduced power setting from takeoff go around, it's uh, there to. Mm -hmm. It will be able to get airborne with with flex, but it's a reduced setting to kind of keep the engines from wearing out too much. And, uh, before you engage the autopilot. Yeah, or yeah, or actually we before we engage I mean, the yeah, autopilot. Yeah, after after we yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll go from toga back to. Yeah, to or or even if we take off with toga uh, with flex, uh, mm -hmm. we'll keep it there for a bit, and then when we get to about one. And for this takeoff, we can use flaps one. So there's a locking mechanism here that is released when you lift that up and pull the uh, flap lever inside. We have the landing gear lever here, and that works also by pulling out and up, and then the landing gear will go up. Uh, we have a short checklist here um, on the runway. If we need to stop, if, for example, uh, the air traffic control tells you to stop, or for other, or we have a we hear something or smell something. Uh, we set the motor brake to max. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, yeah. So. Here. Yeah. So this is the um, autopilot panel or the FCU, so flight control unit. So we have set that we'll climb to eight thousand feet. Uh, these, the speed and the heading mm -hmm. uh, indicators there um, don't have any values, but we do have two dots, and those dots indicate that it's taking the information now from the FMC. So the flight management computer. Can you, this will zoom in or something. Uh, yeah, or you can zoom in using this. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, about there. That's about. That's pretty good. Uh, and we'll keep it there for a little bit. We'll make sure that the power or the thrust is being added equally and to the same. Power amount. moving. Do good. I need to use the lever? Um, now the you, pedal? Yeah. Now you can. You can right or left? Uh, maybe the... right a little bit so we get centered with the runway, and then you can. Uh, move these thrust oh. levers uh, three clicks up. So it'll click one, two, and three. Good. Now we should take off power. And we'll keep it there for, for the rest of the takeoff. And I'll tell you when we can pull, pull back. Yeah, or there. Now we can start pulling back on the stick. Very good. Nice. Are we looking at 15? Yeah, now? and now we're looking at 15. Mm -hmm. So, a bit more. Good. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there, yeah. Oh, it holds it right. Yeah, it'll, it'll hold oh, it. Okay. And the reason is that the trim trim here is turning itself, so it's it's uh, keeping it where you're where you left it. Um, we oh. can lift the landing gear up there. Good. And now we got the. Actually, pull the power lever to clicks back. Good, yeah. And now we got the green cross there, or two green lines, so there and there. And those tell us uh, where we have to put the nose. So that horizontal green line is showing that it's below the black spot, so we have to push the nose down as well. Very good. Good. We can raise the flaps, so all the way up. The vertical line here is on our left side, so we have to turn left to get that centered with the black spot. Very nice. Yeah, 
yeah. looks like cat and mouse. Yeah, yeah. In my, in my uh, chest. Now it now it put the nose down just a little bit um, because it predicted that we're reaching our cruising altitude of eight thousand feet. And it's showing seven two. Now. Yeah, but now it wants you to lift the nose up just a little bit so we keep climbing to. Back there. All good. Everything comfortable. Eight. Very nice. We just level up here. Yeah. And now because we have a pretty nice and straight uh, route all the way to, or we have our next waypoint fully flying as well. So, like I said, we're approaching Prenko now next, and that's that's over there. So we'll fly to Prenko and then. T and four two five, and then turn right. And this will be on our autopilot. Also. Yeah. Or, or if we want to fly it ourselves, then it, we can fly it ourselves. But it'll guide us the same way using that. Um, we can see that we have a restriction here, five thousand feet or above, is what we're where we're supposed to be at at that point. And you can see the sits and stars if you press, or you have, you have the flight plan already there. But if you press, for example, that one there, now you, this is the talent. Um, yep. And if you press arrival. So once we've selected rank one kilo, the aircraft knows, okay, you want to fly this kind of route. Mm -hmm. So it's it's put all the waypoints for us there. We don't have to manually insert them. Um, and as you can see, the aircraft turned us now to, we're at TN4. You don't use any uh, HUD or something? Here. Uh, we could have a HUD, but this, mm -hmm. this one doesn't have um, any. Mm -hmm. And A320s normally don't have mm -hmm. HUDs, but um, the that, will, that would help, but we can land uh, Manually with for our category one ILS approach using the again, right. and then you can put it into MDA. Get oh, so you, you work here and then you yeah get and then you put it in yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah and that what we just put in is um, the altitude where once we yes good and we can set the auto brake to medium excellent good and if you want to. Uh, land the aircraft yourself. I recommend it. It's much more fun than mm. watching the autopilot do it. Good. And yeah, this this the thrust lever we only pull back once we're just about to touch the ground. Um, and all the way back. Yeah, all the way back. Right? Yeah. 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 And uh, initially, before we touch the ground, we just bring it to zero. But once we're on the ground, then we lift these up and all the way back uh, to the left here, above, around the mocks. Uh, we should have taken the uh, localizer to the side, side uh, or the lateral guidance um, should have been activated and somewhere been past the uh, So it starts looking for the uh, for the runway signal, run or it'll mark the capture with a green block mark as well. But, uh, as long as we follow the flight direction. Perfect winter yeah. conditions. <laughs>
the red arrow pointing down. Yeah. Meaning. Uh, yeah, that's just. Oh, I did do it. Uh, no, that's it. Just showing that we're coming down. Yeah. Right. You can start. You can kind of put your hand on the thrust. We still don't need to pull back. Just a little bit back on the power and on the stick. Now you can pull back. Good. Very nice. Nice. And then you can lift the thrust levers. Yep. There. And that's just because it thinks we're taking off, so it's nothing to disregard that. The loader brake is activated, so it's um, braking the aircraft by itself, and the reverse thrust is also active. So it's there, so that's looking really good. And what stage do you, should you release them? Uh, you can release the them. Yeah, you can release them now. And normally it's at around 70 knots, uh, but that would be then that we'd vacate from there. Mm -hmm. and we had a taxiway just behind us there, so it, sometimes if, if it's deemed possible, we would have like, even used man manual braking to stop even earlier to vacate the runway from there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we can stop, stop attached to a system that kind of keeps the uh, G G force um, constant, so that passengers in the cabin and, and also on the flight deck they don't feel that we're turning, for example, or going up and down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So. By following the flight director, that accurately also made sure that passengers constantly kind of felt that they're just going forward, mm. even though we were turning and going up and down. So they just felt that we're kind of stationary on one spot and all of a sudden we're on the ground. So really, really great.